The Honorable Asot Michael created history in Antigua and Barbuda by becoming the first independent candidate to win a seat in general elections. An independent candidate has never won a seat in our political history. And uh, per, uh, those people who are political historians will remind us that there have been many brave and popular men who have tried it. I think Donald Halstead uh, tried to run independent at one time. Hugh Marshall, there was a Mr. Joseph um, who also ran independent of both political, major political parties or of any uh, small fractured parties. Asset Michael won resoundingly, defeating the ABLP's Rawdon Turner, the UPP's Tevon Harriet, and the DNA's Chenille Imhoff. The final scores in St. Peter's, Rawdon Turner, 899 votes, Tevon Harriet, 601 votes, Chenille Imhoff, 29 votes, and Asset Michael, who is now Honorable Asset Michael, 2,137 votes. Very conclusive, very convincing decimation of his opponents and basically cementing himself into the hearts of St. Peter's and across the political tapestry of this country. We're very pleased to have on the Zoom platform Honorable Asset Michael. Good morning and welcome to Observer AM, Minister Michael or Mr. Michael. Good morning, Dr. Jackie Quinley Andrew, and thank you so much for the opportunity to speak with you and it's, to share with the nation my reflections on general elections. Yes, it sounds like you have lost your voice. I know you had a thank you motorcade yesterday. Yes, it went very, very well. It's, well, it actually was not supposed to be a motorcade. It was supposed to be a drive through to thank the people, but it did, in fact, turn into a huge motorcade. Okay. Um, it had nearly 900 cars or more. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Well, you had um, uh, 2,137 people voting for you, so you had very popular support there. Now, first of all, tell me and my listeners, how exactly do you feel about this victory? What are your reflections? Is this vindication, validation for Honorable Asset Michael? Well, before I answer that, I just want to, if you would permit me, Yes. Just to say that you, you know, I have, you may be interested in any revelations I have post election. So let me first of all just say the Bible teaches that Jesus, the Son of God, chose Apostle Peter to lead the effort in carrying out his message after he, Jesus, would have gone. But what they were preaching, teaching, and doing was revolutionary. I believe, Dr. Leandro, that in last week's general election, God chose the people of the constituency of St. Peter to lead what would be recorded in the history of our country and region as a revolution, a peaceful and bloodless revolution, but a revolution nonetheless. Just as Jesus had appointed Peter to be the rock upon which the church would be built, so God chose the people of St. Peter to be the rock upon which the revolution against bad leadership and for better governance in Antigua and Barbuda would be built. And let me also add and say this. The rejected stone, that is to say the long-suffering neglected people of St. Peter, became the cornerstone on January the 18th, 2023. Not me and all, the people of St. Peter. And what was this revolution, you may ask? St. Peter's always been a labor stronghold. And prior to the elections, it had been represented by myself since 2004, a call to service which has both honored and humbled me and now more so than ever. Can you now repeat that question for me? Um, well, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to find out how, how you felt about the victory. It, it, it's, it's vindication, it's a validation of your efforts because we know all the rigors of the campaign, all that you went through with the court case and with your colleagues, your former colleagues in the ABLP. We know that uh, it really was a very arduous campaign for you. Yes, well, I don't think, not definitely not validation. The validation is always there, but definitely vindication. Mm -hmm. One, after the general elections of 2014, especially towards the end of the term, the member for St. John City West, the Prime Minister, Minister of Finance, 
he began conducting himself in an openly hostile manner towards me. And I found that my efforts to obtain his support, Dr. Leandro and assistance to fund and introduce projects for my beloved people of St. Peter were consistently frustrated and blocked by him. For, because his attitude was that those people would vote for the Labour Party anyway, so no need to spend money on them. But his reckless neglect and denial of my constituents and our constituency was not only a reflection of poor judgment on his part, it was also being done because his hostility and bitterness towards me was so deep that he thought by spiting and depriving the people of St. Peter, he could get them to blame me. He could get them to turn against me and reject me as their representative. So he had no hesitancy in punishing them, not me, punishing them, hoping that they in turn would punish me. And when you believe that you have seen the deepest depths of vindictiveness and heartlessness, you are shocked to learn that you haven't. You know, I have to say this. His personal bitterness became an obsession. So much that the constitution of the anti Babylon Labour Party was callously reached and abused in order to replace me as the ABLP candidate. I took him to court. I defeated him there. And, you know, he became paranoid. Prime Minister Gaston Brown became paranoid that one day I may rise up to challenge him for the leadership of the anti Babylon Labour Party. So he went further than that. He cancelled me and tried to get me disciplined by the tribunal, a kangaroo tribunal he set up with Max Hurst, and they failed. They failed the court ruled against them, that I'm a member of the executive, I can attend executive meetings, I'm a member still of the anti Babylon Labour Party. So what happened next? He announced the election date and the campaign intensified. He tried very hard to knock me out. In fact, Dr. Leandro, I mean, you would remember, he told me to thump me in my face. Literally. Literally knock you out. So literally correct. and figuratively. Correct, correct. And the whole region heard him. The whole world heard Prime Minister Brown, and it was shame. It was a shame what he did. And most importantly, the people of St. Peter heard him. But that poor man, Gaston Brown, thought that he was hurting me. He didn't realize he was insulting and angering St. Peter, the rock of Antigua politics. <laughs> Excuse me. And that rock responded by returning their servant, me, the parliament. Mm -hmm. And not only returning me, but as you just said, getting the biggest win of the elections, defeating the ABLP, UPP, and the DNA candidates, combined by 668 votes, a whopping margin of 18%. Mm -hmm. So the people of St. Peter sent a very strong message to Gaston Brown and to everybody else. And what was that message? The message was, we are not going to allow ourselves to be seduced, induced, bullied or intimidated and we're not going to imprison ourselves with any blind support of any one political party we'll vote as we think fit in our best interest and that's what they did mm -hmm. and this is more than just an act of defiance dismissal and defeat of gaston brown by the people of saint peter and it is all of those things mm -hmm. but it's also an act by the people who have now established themselves as the rock upon which the future political dispensation will be built. And I just want to thank them because this brave and wise act by the people of St. Peter is the start of a revolution of change in this country. And politicians and political parties better understand that and they must understand it quickly. Do you think uh, that the ABLP leadership regrets their decision not to include you on their ticket? That's a good question. Let me answer it this way. If they have any regrets, I'm sure they'll be too ashamed to admit them. But they must be very embarrassed with their performance. I mean, oh, how the mighty have fallen. Do you realize, Dr. Leandro, that the ABLP is now a minority government? Yes. Yes. So you do not. Yes, they, you know, they have fewer votes. Uh, when you combine all the votes on the opposition benches, uh, the 
opposition has more votes than the sitting administration. Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and let me ask this. Do you realize that 53% of the people of this country voted against this government? That's right. Or, and it only has a one-seat majority in parliament, mm -hmm. only because of the luck and chance peculiarities of the first-past-the-post system that we have in, this, in these islands. Mm -hmm. They should be taken stock of what the result of the election means. The prime minister should take, take stock in terms of the people's interest in greater inclusivity. Mm -hmm. citizen participation and better governance. But they're not doing that. The mission to cancel me from the political life of our country started with Gaston Brown, while most of my other colleagues stood aside and looked. And it was a shame that senior members, like Sir Robin Yearwood, Sedwell Benjamin, Maldwin Joseph, all of them stood aside and looked. Even Chet Green, the chairman of the party, and during the election campaign, a number of them joined him and came at me all guns blazing. Mm. I have no problem with that, you know. They say it's politics. <clears throat> and politicians must support sorry, the party leader and score the political points by any means necessary. So I don't mind that. That was the election. But the point is the election is over. And the people have spoken. Mm -hmm. And there are lessons to be learned. But based on the divisive, inflammatory rhetoric still being engaged by Gaston Brown after the election. It appears that the ABLP is stone deaf and has no interest in changing the undemocratic governance conduct mm -hmm. that is isolating it from the people and the Prime Minister needs to realize his unpopularity. I had a democratic right to seek to continue to represent my people and they had a democratic right to have me continue as a representative, if it's what they desired. But the leaders of the Labour Party should consider carefully the violations of the party constitution, the rule of law, to savagely attack these rights just to satisfy the dictatorial excesses of one man. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? No, but no. unfortunately, under the Labour Party, Gaston Brown has developed great comfort in trampling the rights of the people in constituencies that choose to victimize mm -hmm. with denial of resources for livelihood, sustain, sustainability, housing, education, health, and public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And this injustice of weaponizing public resources against constituencies because ruling parties either cannot win them or lose them is a blight. It's a blight that must be canceled from our democracy. And I'm saying that this morning without fear or favor. Okay. We, we have yes. to take a quick break. We have to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue our discussion with the Honorable Asset Michael. I've been cast aside and been despised. Mm -hmm. But I'm Daniel in the lion's den. Jonah in the belly of the whale. I'm not alone, so I cannot fail. No, no, no. And I'm born. I dearly beloved constituents of St. Peter. This is your independent member of parliament, Asset Michael, thanking you for your overwhelming support in the election of January 18th, 2023. I thank the people of Parham, Piers, Painters, Fidges Creek, Gunthorps, Lightfoot, Vernon, Cedar Hill, North Sound, Mount Joy, Wears and Lindsay. I thank you all for your vote of confidence in me as a loving, caring representative, committed to serving the needs of all. With everything inside of me, I will honor the faith and trust with which you have appointed me to serve in this important leadership responsibility. With everything inside of me, I will strive to exceed your expectations for continuous improvement in the quality of life for all constituents. With your votes, St. Peter chose an independent parliamentary representative for the first time in Antigua and made history in a most emphatic way. I thank the other candidates who ran in this year's election, and I thank every voter who went to the polls for participating in a democratic process. Our constituency and country are better for it. I'm humbled, honored, and deeply moved by the outpouring of strong support throughout the constituency. St. Peter has spoken. 
and St. Peter has spoken decisively about the suitability of my skills, competencies, and experience in public service for the responsibility of building the constituency and taking it to higher heights of progress and prosperity. I pledge to work with our government, the private sector, our diaspora partners, and friendly governments to secure the resources needed for more jobs at higher wages and salaries, better education, better health care, better roads, and better water and electricity services is yet to come. So let's go forward together as one people and one constituency. Blessed and highly favored at the dawn of this new era to serve with compassion, honesty, and integrity in the development of our beloved country. With love and devotion, I humbly surrender to causes that bind us always. Thank you, St. Peter. I love you. God bless you all. Is your 2023 goal to move into your own home? Well, future homeowner, enjoy another payday. Build or buy a home with financing from CIBC First Caribbean, and you'll receive cash back every month for one year. A home is one of your greatest investments, so secure one soon. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash homeowners payday for more info. Offer valid from January 9 through to March 31, 2023. Terms and conditions apply. ECAB reminds you to make alternate payment arrangements. The Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank wishes to remind former Scotiabank customers to make alternate payment arrangements as all former Scotiabank ATMs and cards will be unavailable from 12 p.m. on Friday, January 20th, 2023. All services will be restored by Monday, January 23rd, 2023. This interruption is to facilitate the integration of former Scotiabank accounts into our banking platform. Additionally, all six ECAP branches will be closed for cash operations on January 23rd and 24th, 2023. However, our branches will be open to accommodate card collection and online and mobile banking enrollment on these days. All branches will resume regular operations on January 25th, 2023. We are here to help make the transition seamless and invite you to visit the Integration Hub on our website at www.ecabank.com or contact us at 480-6187. Stay tuned for more updates from the Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank. Our future, our bank. This is Observer Radio. Your voice counts. Your questions are answered. This is Observer AM. Welcome back to Observer AM. It is 8.33 in Antigua and Barbuda and across the Eastern Caribbean. We are having a discussion with Honorable Asset Michael, the man who created history in the constituency of St. Peter's and certainly in the history of politics in Antigua and Barbuda by winning the independent seat convincingly, conclusively, decisively. Uh, Honorable Michael, what do you say to those people who say that your playbook uh, to winning has been transactional, just as the ABLP from whose bowels uh, you are from? We know the ABLP spent millions of dollars on this election. Uh, what about the, the, the sorts of monies that you would have pumped into this election? We know that you invested a lot into winning the seat. What do you say to those critics who say, well, um, you know, you, have, you also are playing the same game that the ABLP would have played? 
Well, let me first answer that question by saying that it's not just at election times that I help my constituents. Okay. It's during five-year terms. I do a lot in terms of helping them, CXC students, medical assistance to families or individuals to go overseas, scholarships, full-time scholarships for my constituents under my father's trust that we pay for every single year for students that are in different universities across the globe, in the Caribbean at UV, and also as far as Halifax and Mary's University and Monroe University and other universities in Miami and so forth. At election times, yes, I do spend money. You have to spend money on billboards. You have to spend money on paraphernalia. But if you look around in the constituency of St. Pete and still drive there, the billboards that I put up is not even half of what Ward and Turner put up, my opponents, from the ABLP. All the lampposts are covered in red. All of the lampposts was left no space for me to even put my posters. That they, put, they even put their posters on top of mine and were ripping them down. And I will say to the people of St. Peter, and they know that, that Asset Michael is a generous person. Yes, election is expensive. You have to bring in consultants, you have to bring in public relations people, and you have to have a proper structure, mm -hmm. which I did. Uh, but they, they spent a lot of money. And let us emphasize the point. A lot of that money belongs to the state. It is public money that the ABLP spent, and it has no business, Dr. Leandro, in the election campaign of any political party. Mm -hmm. And let's remind ourselves what the representation people access. The treating of electors with free entertainment at state finance one nation concert. It's a glaring example. Mm -hmm. It is a violation of the representation people act. You know why? It was blatantly organized that one nation concert and presented as an ABLP event with the prime minister appearing yeah. and giving a message there. It was calculated to corruptly influence votes. And this violation of our election law is an abuse of incumbency and an offense against free and fair elections with integrity. Mm -hmm. But as you have indicated at the end of the day, there was not much, if anything at all, to show for all the lavish spending the Labour Party did. Right. They spent millions. Let me say to you, they spent millions even in St. Peter. They spent millions of dollars. The Prime Minister told me when we went to mediation in front of my lawyer, Hugh Marshall Jr. and Dr. Dorset, when we were trying to get mediation, he said to me, if I run as an independent candidate and do not withdraw myself from the politics of this country, that he's going to put a minimum, you've already raised two million US from one mm. single investment. But I just want to say, I did not spend nothing close to that. Wow. Nothing. Nothing close to that. Mm -hmm. not, even, not even a million dollars I spent in total EC because I did not need to. But the ABLP, let's, let's, just, let's just make this point. They are in decline. And he's becoming increasingly unpopular with his crude, intemperate, undemocratic behavior. And he's dragging the party down with him. And I just want to make this other point, you know. While it may be difficult at times for some, Democracy, Dr. Leandro, is the best governing system available to God's people of good conscience all around the world. We're not in China. We're not in Russia. And so if we really believe in democracy in this country, we must practice it faithfully, mm -hmm. even when it hurts. We must practice democracy faithfully even when it hurts. I, I just want to, uh, that point you made about the One Nation concert, uh, you have made that assertion, and I want to protect Observer. Um, we are not aware that it was uh, public money that was spent on the One Nation concert. We are not aware of that, and I just want to put in that disclaimer in terms of the accusation that it was public money spent on uh, spent by the ABLP on the One Nation concert. Now, I want to move um, uh, to so another point. Given that you have always pledged your devotion uh, to the ABLP, 
how are you likely uh, to vote on bills in parliament what will your posture be in parliament standing across your former colleagues in the house well i could say one thing that i'm not tied to any political party yes i'll be positive i've been in public service for over 25 years starting as chief of staff to lester bird in 1997 and a minister in 1999. And I've been elected since 2004 as the MP, parliamentary representative. So I have a pretty good idea of how things are supposed to work and how best I can engage constructively with members of the executive of the government of the day mm -hmm. and my colleagues in the legislature also to serve the best interests of my constituents. Mm -hmm. But now I am free from any obligation to tow any party lines or to be constrained by partisan preferences and issues on national importance. And I will be speaking out on issues of national importance. I have the freedom to say what I see, feel, and honestly believe so that things go right in Nanti and Barbie the family. Mm -hmm. And one of those things that needs to go right in our national family is adequate allocation of public resources. Mm -hmm to meet the needs of all of the constituencies without fear or favor, not just St. Peter, all affection or ill will. And I just want to say, you cannot victimize constituencies that you have lost also. The ABLP must stop doing that. Constituencies that they have lost, they still have to give public infrastructure, good health, and good infrastructure to them, housing. And as someone who has spent significant financial resources on community needs, which I have, where government fails or refuses to honor its financial responsibility. I'll be fearless. I'll be relentless. I want my people to know I'll be relentless mm -hmm. in advocating and champion action in and out of parliament for the change that we desperately need. And I will do it without fear or favor. Now, someone is, has sent me uh, a message, Mr. Michael. After you won, you led a motorcade through piers yesterday to the home uh, of an elderly woman, the grandmother of the lady who died on New Year's Day, leaving seven children behind. And the person is asking me to ask Mr. Michael, who is that elderly lady? What does she mean to you? And how has she impacted your life? And why, why did she cry tears of joy for your resounding victory? That's a message that has come in. I, I am not. But are you familiar with this situation, Mr. Michael? I'm familiar going to the elderly lady's home. I don't remember her name. But I'm not sure. You said... Uh, who died for her? Uh, the, the, she is the grandmother of the lady who died on New Year's Day, leaving seven children behind. I was not aware of that, but if that is so, I know she cried for joy. She hugged me. There are pictures there. I know her very well. Her name doesn't come to mind right now. But if that is so, that uh, seven children left behind, I have a duty to help them to help them in financial resources, to maintain her, and to help those children, to put them in school, to try and educate them, mm -hmm. and to do whatever is necessary. And those are the things that Aston Michael does, and does from his heart, because it is in my DNA to help people mm -hmm. that I need. So I will reach out to that lady, find out exactly what the facts are, and I will make sure that I go see her personally again, and put something in place concretely to assist to financially to sustain those seven children. That's not a problem. Uh, uh, Mr. Michael, what are your thoughts on, I know that uh, you, you are aware of the monies uh, and the effort and resources spent in St. Peter's to keep you out. What about the efforts um, put into keeping out Trevor Walker in Barbuda? Because I know that the same alacrity and the same force also was put against Trevor Walker in Barbuda. What are your thoughts on that? They spent millions, millions 
to try. In fact, the Prime Minister flew over to Barbuda. Are you aware? Yes. The Prime Minister I saw spent, videos. He spent most of the election day. What do you think he went out there to do? You think he went just to walk and support the ABLP candidate? He was giving out monies. I'm sure. I'm sure he was giving out monies. And also prior to that election day, they spent a lot, a lot of money. I don't know where they got it from. Where they, I'm not making no assertions here. I don't want observer to be sued, so we're not calling any names. But I, I have some ideas of where they got it. But they spent a lot of money, millions, to try and get Trevor Walk out. Now, we came in this election, we came extremely close to an 8-8 situation. We have a 17-member a lower house. If there is uh, a by-election at any time, it really could get to that situation. 8-8, eight, eight, <laughs> with no party, no uh, major political party getting uh, the majority. What is going to be your position if that happens, or had that happened? I will join with any coalition government in, for the best interests of Antigua and Barbuda and Labour Party. I mean, sorry, for the people. I correct that. For the people's interests. I hope that's I not am, a Freudian slip. No, no, it's not. <laughs> absolutely not. I mean, you know, I'm a member of the Labour Party still. He says I'm not. Not because I ran independent. He thinks he can cancel me out of the Labour Party, but that's the next matter. I'll mm -hmm. take him to court again. Because we have a court judgment. Mm -hmm. But if it was 8-8, eight, eight, whatever party is willing to put forward a prime minister that we believe that has the best interest of this country, that commands the majority of the parliamentarians in the House, I'll vote for that person. Mm. I will vote for that person to lead us. And I'm sure, and I do have knowledge, and concrete knowledge, that both sides, not just the UPP, but the ABLP, would do the same there are members of the AABLP who want to be Prime Minister and wanted to be Prime Minister had it been 8-8. Mm -hmm. But they went to negotiate huge ministries with the government, with the Prime Minister, when he formed his government. Just look at it. He gave Melford Nicholas, who only lost by what? Four votes? Six votes? Melford won by what? Six votes? And he gave him, he gave him the whole Ministry of Public Utilities. He added on social improvements to Honorable Marvin Joseph and Blue Economy. You know, he added immigration to the Attorney General. He, he gave his wife public works in addition to housing and lands. And we know that there's a Prime Minister going to run that ministry. So, you know, he's Minister of Finance, he's Minister of Prime Minister, and he's also Minister of Public Works and Housing mm -hmm. and Land. And then... You know, each minister, he increased. Chet Green, the Honorable Chet Green, who wanted to be Prime Minister, let me say this publicly, and was for an advocating a and, and government of national unity, had it been 8-8. Because he had said so many times in my home here, Dryden, in the presence of other witnesses, that he would support a government of national unity, a coalition, between the UPP and the ALB, ABLP. Because he wanted to be Prime Minister, but you know what he did? He went and told the Prime Minister that other persons are calling him, including myself, to become Prime Minister. That is downright treachery. Mm. Just to negotiate and just to get a huge ministry, not just foreign affairs and international trade and investment, but now agriculture. I've never, ever heard in no government in the Caribbean that agriculture goes with foreign affairs. Never. Never have I heard it. Anyway, I just want to also add here one thing and remind you that the ABLP on the Gaston Brown is in decline. The number of electors, Dr. Leandro, the registered voters, these figures I got from ABEC, across Antigua and Barbie would increase by 19%. And 19% from 51,258 in 2018 to 60,916 in 2023. And notwithstanding that increase, 
the number of electors voting for the ABLP decreased by 3,011. Yes. Or 30 percent. So the Labour Party had a decrease of 13 percent between 2018 and 2023. And 15 of the 17 ABLP candidates, including Gaston Brown, got less votes in 2023 than they did in 2018. Are you aware of that? Yes. Yes. I'm aware of that. But, okay. Okay. Good. By comparison now, I got 1,736 votes in 2018 as the ABLP candidate with the whole ABLP machinery against, with me, with me, running on their ticket. But in 2023, as an independent candidate, I received 2,137 votes, an increase of 401, or 23%. So I increased my margin by 23%. Not only did I do that, I defeated the ABLP candidate, Rod and Turner, by 1,238 votes, mm -hmm. a whopping margin of 34%. I mean, that, that, I mean, if that doesn't send a message to the Labour Party when the Prime Minister got up and kept saying on the public platform, even at the opening of Rod Turner's business hub on the basketball court, there is no way that us and Michael is going to win. Y'all should go back and get that clip. No way. That the people of St. Peter mm -hmm. is going to vote for an independent candidate. No way will the people be so stupid. And not only he quoted and he said, I'm quoting him, he said, Lord and Turner will not only win, but he will decisively win, mm -hmm. overwhelmingly win. Let me go back now to the independent candidates in St. Peter. I defeated also the UPP candidate, Trevon Harriet, my son, my beloved football player, by one. 1,536 votes, a margin of 44%. So, in other words, I significantly outperformed all candidates of the party whose leader aggressively championed his personal campaign to use St. Peter as part of his plan to cancel Asset Michael for the political life of Antigua and Barbie. We have to take a quick break. We have to take a quick break and we'll wrap up on the other side of these commercials. Antigua, who do you trust? Yes, really. Who do you trust to ensure the things that matter most? Your home, your vehicle, even your luggage when traveling. Sajigo is the region's leading insurer. In fact, we've been protecting the Caribbean people from loss for over 180 years. So come to Sajiko General first for a competitive quote for your home, motor, travel and marine insurance. Give us a call at 480-5555 or visit Sajiko.com. Sajiko General. Wise financial thinking for life. Hello, this is Sir Richard Richardson and I am very proud and pleased to be a champion ambassador for Emerge. I believe in gender equality and support an end to violence against women. If you are a victim of domestic violence or any form of abuse or gender-based violence, call the Directorate of Gender Affairs Hotline at 463-5555. That is 463-5555. If you are a man who is abusive, I need help to change, call Together We Must at 562-6896. That's 562-6896. Or visit their Facebook page, Together We Must ANU, for information about Emerge. Gender-based violence is wrong. Together, we must put an end to it. Scotiabank Checks. The Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank wishes to advise that Scotiabank branded checks and checks bearing the Scotiabank rousing numbers 6033-5002 and 18325002 will be honored until July 20th, 2023. We ask the public to continue to accept these checks until then. Effective July 24th, 2023, all checks must be branded ECAB and bear the ECAB routing number 00000071. Former Scotiabank customers may continue to order new checkbooks as customary, whether online, in branch, 
or directly from the vendor. If you have any questions or concerns, please contact one of our friendly customer service representatives at info at ecabank.com or call 480-6187. Stay tuned for more updates from the Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank. Our future, our bank. This is Observer Radio. Your voice counts. Your questions are answered. This is Observer AM. Welcome back to Observer AM. And we are wrapping up our discussion with the Honorable Asset Michael, independent uh, candidate and winner of the St. Peter's constituency. Mr. Michael, we saw um, uh, you were having some difficulties with that uh, branch of the CUB. Has that matter been resolved? The Caribbean Union Bank. Have you been able to resolve that matter? Is he still online? Uh, your microphone is muted. Could you just unmute, please? Sorry about that. Yes, the, the matter with CUB has been resolved. And um, I'm happy to say that they're working very closely with my family my two sisters and myself. So okay. that is over. Excellent. Uh, your, just your final words. We have half a minute. Your final words as you head into uh, Parliament this week sometime to be sworn in as uh, the independent MP for St. Peter's. Can you imagine they've not even given us any notice? I see the senators will be sworn in today. They've not even given us the elected representatives any notice. When is the, the swearing in will be take place? I just want to say that Gaston Brown mistakes of the governance of the nation as running it like a private company to be filled with his loyal family and friends who would not and do not question his decisions. I will continue to speak out without fear or favor. And his shortcomings, the prime ministers, lie in the impatience to be amongst the wealthy and rich and simply wishes to use the office of the people. But I want to just caution him in my closing remarks. The German poet Martin Neumuller cautioned many moons ago what happens when in the face of injustice and oppression, we look the other way and we fail in the practice of solidarity with each other. And I quote, first they came for the socialists. I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out as I was a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak to me. Well, my final message today is Asad Michael speaks out now and will always continue to do so. And Gaston Brown, Prime Minister Brown, will not intimidate him into submission to his will in order to secure the long-term benefit of massive wealth creation the resources of the poor, struggling people of this nation. And I just want to say, it is truly sad that no one in the leadership, and I said so, of the Labour Party will stand on principle against the selfishness, ingratitude, and disloyalty to comrades, so regrettably epitomized in the party's leader. Yes. The people of St. Peter, they voted for me. I want to thank them. I'm humbled for the support and election day that they gave me. And they vote to secure loving, caring, and tried and trusted representation in Asset Michael in Parliament. By a chief servant, I will be for the people, by the people, and I will continue to represent with every single blood in my veins and every breath in my body. Thank you. I love them. I love them, and I, I will continue to fight for them. Thank you so much, Dr. Leandro. Thank you for having me this morning. It thank was a you. pleasure and honor. And thank you for your listening public. And may God bless the people of St. Peter. May God bless the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Thank you thank very you much. So much. Thank you very much. That was the Honorable Asset Michael, MP for St. Peter's constituency.